How's it going everybody? It's Mikhail Casanova. I'm coming at you with yet another banging video. And in this one, I'm going to be doing my SNES Classic Edition review. What I think of it, do I feel the value of $79 is worth it for it? Do I think you should invest in the Hori Fight Commander controller that's $25? And just as a whole, how I feel about this SNES Classic Mini. And also a quick comparison between the SNES Classic Mini and the NES Classic, well actually it's the SNES Classic Edition and the NES Classic Edition. I'm sorry, I'm so used to seeing Mini just because if you look at the size of the console, it's definitely a miniaturized version of what, you know, what you would buy. So, um, it's got 21 games on it and uh, a lot of people have been griping about the games that come with this thing. And um, it, it's just, it's a bit surprising that there's some games that were left out, uh, Chrono Trigger being among them. Uh, I, I I have to say, like that was the the defining one of the defining games for the SES growing up in the '90s, back in '95. Um, I don't know how they kind of omitted that game to put in something like, you know, like. What else is on here that could have been left out? Uh, Kirby's Dream Course could have been left. In my opinion, Kirby's Dream Course, it's not a bad game. It's actually a really good game. I just think it could have been left out. I don't think it was super essential to have that game on um, the SNES Classic. Um, but, hey, they added that on there. I, I could have done without that. I would have liked Chrono Trigger. I definitely would have liked Final Fight 3, uh, which I think was the best of the three Final Fight games on the SNES. Um, there's a couple of the games I think could have been put on here. Uh, I definitely would have taken uh, Mega Man X2 and 3. I wish they could have put all the whole trilogy because that's an excellent trilogy for the Super NES. But I can understand because Mega Man X, the, the first one, was considered such a quintessential classic. So, of course, that's going to be on there. Uh, a couple games I didn't play growing up, uh, being Earthbound, I didn't play that. Uh, I only recently played that as of a couple days ago. Uh, I never played um, Secret of Mana growing up, but I'm kind of hooked on that now. I've been playing that nonstop for the last three days. And other than that, the only other game I didn't play growing up was Super Metroid. And a lot of people are probably going to be like, oh my god, how have you never played that? Well, you know, in my household, it wasn't, um, growing up, they didn't, my, my siblings didn't really care for RPGs or anything that made you have to have a very long attention span for it. They just wanted to pick it up, start playing it, walk to the right and press punch, or uh, play a fighting game, or shooter, and that's just about that. So, I didn't really play that growing up. Um, my first entry into the Metroid franchise uh, to be honest, was actually Metroid Prime on the GameCube, and then uh, along with playing that, I went and also played uh, Metroid Zero Mission, and I beat that, as well as playing Metroid Fusion. Uh, I owned, I do own Metroid 2 uh, Echoes, I didn't really get into that heavy. Um, I also own Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, I didn't really get into that game either. But I do have the trilogy, which uh, I have been playing that recently, and I'm playing them in chronological order, and I'm really enjoying them so far. Um, what's the other thing? Uh, Final Fantasy III I did not play growing up. My first entry to the Final Fantasy uh, series was actually uh, Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation. It's because, uh, you know, for me, growing up, I was really heavy into reading. I love reading. I still love reading to this day. Um, have as much time as I had as a kid but you know it was always a passion of mine reading and so RPGs the story that they were telling this the themes the uh, the way things would go down was just so amazing for me and I just really really loved it growing up so you know I've been dabbling in all of the Final Fantasy games I've played and completed pretty much all of them at this point except for 15 um, and the other two parts to the 13 trilogy. Uh, I didn't play 13 2. I haven't finished uh, Lightning Returns just because those stories just haven't done much for me. Um, 
and yeah, that's that's that on that. But getting back to this, and and the one I'm actually holding, this is actually the one that I'm going to be giving away to one lucky subscriber. So if you guys haven't already, definitely check the green link below. The I will be doing a giveaway for this, and um, I've found a lot of value in this. The 21 games I uh, included, minus the ones I said that I think could have been swapped out for something else. Um, I think are definitely worth the value. If you were to buy an SES and get these games, even to this day, you would pay more than the $79 MSRP. Um, if you were to uh, have gotten them back in the day, you would still be paying more than 80, 80 bucks. And I feel like it's really a, a really good uh, value. One thing I really like they did with this that they, I felt they could have done with this one is included the two controllers so like this one you get two controllers with a five foot cord out of the box with the nes classic edition you didn't get that you just got one you had to pay the 20 bucks or so to get the second controller and you know that was kind of that on that and you know um, that that was always a gripe i had with that um but this one two controllers out of the box so plug and play as a bunch of uh two-player games on here secret of mana uh mario kart you got Donkey Kong Country, you've got uh, Country 3, you got the Kirby Dream Course, and uh, you've got Mario World, which are two player games, and they're definitely great two player games. Uh, there's a lot of value, and I do feel like the games of the SNES Classic Edition hold up significantly better than about 90% of the games that are on the NES Classic Edition, uh, just because better programming for one better understanding of uh balancing of difficulty however when i say balancing of difficulty super ghouls and ghosts anyway so um yeah be better balancing of the difficulty, uh, level designs better on games on the Super NES than they were on the NES. Now, there were some standout games on this one, but I think as a whole, as a package, you get better value for games with this one. Um, and these are games, that, a lot of these games are not going to be games you're going to beat within, you know, a... a hour to hour time span if you're going to play Legend of Zelda Link to the Past you're going to be investing at the minimum I'm going to say about six maybe seven hours possibly even ten and if you want to do a hundred percent you're probably going to get about 13 to 14 hours out of it uh, same thing with Super Mario World uh, as well as Yoshi's Island the RPGs are definitely going to be as if you play Super Mario RPG Legend of the uh, Seven Stars you're definitely going to be uh, putting a lot of time into that game um, probably 25 hours uh, with Super Metroid you're guaranteed you're gonna put about five five to ten hours into that uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts unless you're a sadomasochist I don't know how you're gonna beat that within an hour um, Earthbound you're definitely gonna put a lot of time into that same with Secret of Mana um, uh, what else is that? Final Fantasy 3 is definitely a time sink there's a lot of games in here that are time sinks that I think are really good and the funny thing is I've actually put more time into playing this in the last three days than I have into my Xbox One in the last, well, the, the bulk of this year. <laughs> it's just bad to say that because I'm a gamer, but I'm not trying to say that the Xbox One is a bad console. It's just um, there are not many games aside from shooters that really capture my attention on the Xbox One. Um, but that, yeah, this is definitely uh, something I feel you guys will enjoy. There's a lot of retro graphics in it. Um, as a gaming collector and a gaming, uh, you know, a gamer, pure and through and through. I, I like games. It, as long as the game is good, I don't really care about the graphics per se. A lot of people are, are graphics purists, and I feel like um, that's cool. It's kind of shallow. It's really shallow in my opinion. But if that's your thing, then that's your thing. Um there are a lot of gems like Star Fox uh, let's be honest Star Fox to this day does it hold up uh, it, it's still good if you can look at it and play it you know with a nostalgic mentality then yeah it's still good um, if you're looking at it as a modern game then no however Star Fox 2 is definitely a significant 
better game and I have been enjoying that however if you play on the normal difficulty that's actually gonna be easy so you're gonna breeze through everything you probably beat the game I've actually beat the game within an hour um, and I think I have some gameplay footage that I'll roll for you guys to see the different things on it um, if you are to play if you want to play it on a normal difficulty pick hard because that's the normal for that game and I think it's a lot better. If you've ever played Star Fox 64, you can see where a lot of this, uh, Star Fox 2 actually influenced a lot of Star Fox 64, Star Fox Assault, Star Fox Command, uh, hell, even Zero. Um, I think it really, if it released in 1996 back when it was made, I think it would have been good. Actually, I think it would have been smart for Nintendo to have released it because within two years, you would have had Star Fox 64. And, you know, that would have held people over. You know, there's not that big of a gap between Star Fox. And I think that's one of the biggest problems with Star Fox games is that we've got such a big layover between titles that a lot of people may forget or they, you know. And now I'm not saying that there are some purists that actually really like Star Fox, like through and through, they'll play every game and they don't care. But that's not the majority. A lot of people, you know, it's like saying um, bringing out an F Zero game if you know one per generation. A lot of people may not remember the original F Zero. Uh, they may not remember F Zero sixty four or the most recent one, which was F Zero. Was it F Zero GX or GP or the it's on the the GameCube, which that was well over a decade ago. That was 12, 13 years ago or more. And a lot of people just, you know, they, they, they never, if, if there is not something to keep people, it fresh in people's memory, they're probably not going to um, be as hyped about it. And given the Star Fox, the first one came out, what, 93, 94? Uh, the second one could have came out in 96, and then you had 64, which would have dropped on 19, in 1998. That would have been dope. A lot of people would have enjoyed that. And I think um, it is a shame to see that it didn't come out back then. I would have been hyped for it back then. Um, one of the other things I think is cool is um, the walkers being able to transfer, trans, you know, transform to different modes in your R-Wing. Um, into like the walker and whatnot, you know, to see how it actually originated and how it, you know, really influenced a lot of what was on the other platforms, you know, with how it is in Star Fox Zero, Star Fox Command, Star Fox Assault. Like, that's just really awesome to see where it all came from. So, I think this is definitely worth your your buck. Uh, Donkey Kong Country is really good. I play, I owned and played the crap out of that growing up. I 100 percent it when I was a kid, and um, a lot of people are saying that they wish Donkey Kong Country 2 was on here. Um, I guess I can see that because that is the best out of the trilogy that was on the Super NES. Um, but hey, I mean once. This has the same architecture as the NES Classic does. So within probably a couple of days, a couple of weeks, someone's going to put out a video for hacking this, and you'll be able to load all, of me, all those games. Do I endorse um, needing to hack it? Uh, that's all up to you. I, I think that's something that um, that's the individual. I'm not going to endorse or say that you should you do that at your own risk i mean i know i did hack this one um to put more games on it that i personally would play uh but those are games that i actually own so if you guys you know the whole situation with roms uh is you can actually have roms if you legally own the original cartridges or the original games if you don't then that is illegal it's considered piracy so uh, that's up to you to decide what you want to do with that from there, that point on. But for me, yeah, once the hack becomes available, uh, I will definitely be adding more games to this. I want the Mega Man X trilogy. I want more of the Donkey Kong games. I want the trilogy for the Donkey Kong games. I want the Final Fight trilogy. Uh, I would like to have um, the, um, Castlevania... Um, Dracula X, which I personally prefer 
as like a really hard retro. I know a lot of people dislike the love design of it, but I would like to have that on there. Um, I just really enjoyed this. Like the controls feel exactly like the original uh, Super Nintendo, so there's no lag or latency or anything like that. Um, I compared it to one of the original uh, Super Nintendo controllers that I have, and man, it feels spot on, and I really, really enjoyed the, that. It just it brought me back to the early '90s, man. It, it was definitely something, and it was a, this is the first console I owned back in the day. Um, was the Super Nintendo, so it really took me back. And yeah, the five foot cords could have been longer, but uh, it is what it is. I mean, you can always go out and get a wireless controller like the Fight Commander um, made by Hori. Now, this is a very solid controller, as you guys have saw in my unboxing video. Uh, this is definitely a lot more ergonomic. It's, you know, definitely feels better in the hand if you're holding it because you actually have places where your hands can rest versus it's a flat back. And um, it feels good. Uh, if there's any gripe, sometimes what throws me off with this controller is the start and select being so far over to the left. And then this, uh, this is basically your start button. Uh, you can do slow motion. So if you slide it all the way up, it's gonna rapidly hit start to slow down the game. Um, and then if it's in the middle, it goes a little bit slower. But yeah, I, I, that's one of the only things that throws me off. Uh, you do have the turbo triggers as well. So if you want to do uh, manual auto fire or just full on auto fire, you can just slide all the way up. If you want it off, you can slide it back down. Uh, you've got basically your six button layout that was pioneered by Sega. Um, it's really good for fighting games. The only issue I have with this controller uh, is when you're playing uh, Street Fighter, uh, it's really hard to do uh, special moves because the D pad is so stiff. Um, but for anything else, it's really good. And I've, I've saw a lot of reviews for this on. Um, on Amazon, uh, a lot of people have been bashing this as a real as a junk controller. Uh, I disagree with that. I think for everything other than Street Fighter, uh, this is a solid controller. It's definitely better than that um, Vok or whatever it was that I got from GameStop originally for 20 bucks, which I really don't recommend that one at all. Uh, this is definitely, I think, one of the best controllers I've pl played with, uh, and uh, with the exception of Street Fighter, which Honestly, Street Fighter 2 Hyper is one of the best Street Fighter 2s, but it's not something I'm going to be playing a lot. I'm primarily going to be on Metroid, I'm going to be on Earthbound, I'm going to be on um, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Castlevania 4, and the like. And for those games, this D-pad is perfect for that. So, um, I still I recommend this. And if you're not going to use this, then just use the default one or wait for um, the controller that 8-bit eight, though is going to come out with. So... Um, all in all, solid package. You can change the different modes, so you can have um, CRT, you can have 4x3 uh, aspect ratio, you can have pixel perfect, uh, you can have borders on the sides of your games, <clears throat> you can do save states, up to four save states per game, uh, you can do rewinds, which is really cool, uh, which go up to about a minute or so, um, and I think that's really cool, uh, the way they do that, and, and that really takes the difficulty down off of a lot of games um, by allowing you to instead of having to start it, the, the checkpoint system in a lot of game, these older games uh, they're not quite as bad as on the, S, the NES Classic where you start all the way at the beginning of the levels a lot of these have mid level checkpoints which are really good and I really enjoy those um, but being able to remind, rewind all the way up to like a minute to go back to see something or change something that you did previously I think is a really good feature to have uh, on this and I'm, I'm I'm happy that it does have that feature now the other thing I see a lot of people griping about is the fact that to reset games or to go back to the home menu you have to hit the reset button um, physically on the console and a lot of people have been complaining about having to get up and walk over to their in this this SNES classic, and, and you guys are gonna hear me go back between, back and forth between saying SNES, Super Nintendo, and SNES, just because different people I know call it different things, so that's how it's gonna be. Um, a lot of people have been complaining about having to physically get up and actually go and 
you know, slide up the reset button right here just to go back or to power it on and off manually. And they feel that that's an inconvenience. But you know what? Nintendo has always been one to want you to physically get up and, and, and get active. So if you're sitting on playing a game for 15 minutes or 20 minutes and you want to switch up, you're becoming physically active by getting up and going over and changing, <laughs> you know, your game by hitting reset. And I know a lot of people feel some kind of way about that, but I mean, you can always, if you guys still have those uh, Wii Classic Controllers or Classic Controller Pros for that were out on the Wii, you know, you can always just literally pull off the flap and, and um, plug those into here. Or if you got the cord extension, you can plug them in and just use those because they work just as well with this as well as with the NES Mini. So, um, it's not really, a, that's not a big issue for me. I It doesn't bother me whatsoever. Um, they could have they could have put it, but if you're going for pure aesthetics of nostalgia, how it was, then I, that's what they're doing. I, I, I don't mind that one, one bit whatsoever. So that, That's my thoughts on that. Um, this is a solid buy. And you got your detractors. There's some people saying you can get a retro pie and just do the same with a retro pie as you could with this. But you know what? A lot of people like the authenticity of this. They like the simplicity of being able to just buy something and that's that. And just plug and play. Retro Play, you have to load the games on. You got to configure it. Some games, the thing is, some games don't always play perfectly through emulation, through uh, devices like that. And, you know, to each their own. I've never understood the idea of why people feel that it's bad to buy retro consoles because. There are whole generations of people that never got to play this, like kids that grew up that were born at the end of the 90s or were born in the 2000s, like my nephews. Um, they will never, they never grew up with this. They grew up with PlayStation 2 and, and the 360 generation. Um, so there is a reason for it. Is it a cash grab? Everything is a, is a cash grab. I mean, I'm not going to be mad at Nintendo for it. I got mine. Like I said on a tweet that I put out um, yesterday, there's two types of people. There are those who are saying, oh, man, great. I was able to get mine, and Nintendo did a real good job with this. They did better than the NES Classic. And then there are people who didn't get it, and their <clears throat> logic is F Nintendo. <clears throat> Sorry. And I think, you know, it's, there's all, and that's with anything. There's always going to be two camps of people and two types of thoughts that go with that. Um, as far as scalpers, you know, Reggie feels me also said that there's going to be plenty of them. So don't give in to scalpers. Don't don't pay whatever exorbitant amount of money that these scalpers want. And I agree with that because there's going to be a lot more shipments of this. This is probably going to be running to the end of the year. Um, but knowing that to know, they'll probably bring it back. Um, I've seen some scalpers want anywhere from 120, 150, all the way up to five grand, and definitely at that price point, I don't think it's worth that. Uh, and Nintendo doesn't feel you need to pay that either, so don't pay any scalpers. I know a lot of people that have bought multiple of these, and we'll try and flip these. And you know, I have a moral issue with uh, trying to finesse markets like that. So, um, yeah. Don't pay scalpers for this. Just wait. It, it's 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 on. You, it, there's more coming in stock. So, anyway, uh, if, thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed being able to review this. I may have bantered, but I just wanted to keep it simple. Um, considering my channel is now officially a gaming channel, it's gaming centric, gaming news, streams. Uh, reviews and whatnot. Uh, I still do other things outside of it. I'll still review, you know, phones and cases and other random tech related items that I'll get. And you guys will be the first ones to know. So definitely make sure that you ding that little bell in the corner over here. Like this, this way, down here. <laughs> ding that bell in the corner. Way you get, you get to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest news that come from this channel and this brand. And um, yeah, if you guys want to win uh, this SNES Classic, the giveaway is still going. I'm going to be giving away towards the end of this month. Um, just make sure you enter the Gleam link. Um, you're subscribed to the channel. 
and just follow the instructions, just follow the rules. It's really simple, and I'll be giving this away. But until next time, guys, this is your boy Mikel Casanova. I'm signing out. You guys have a good one. Deuces, wow. And I'll catch y'all in the next one.